Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Will County 9-11 20th Anniversary Ceremony. At this time, I would like to bring up Will County Executive Jennifer Bertino Tarrant for our open welcoming remarks. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on this very important day where we remember the many lives we lost 20 years ago. I am so heartened and emotional to see so many people here today to join us for this recognition. Before getting started, I would like to thank the law enforcement members and for firefighters who are in attendance today, including those who you will be hearing from during this ceremony. I would also like to take this time to recognize some of our local leaders who have joined us here today. Justice Mary Kay O'Brien, Judge Carlson, Chief Judge John Kennedy, Dan Kennedy, sorry Dan, <laughs> Senator John O'Connor, Senator Meg Cappell, State Attorney Jim Glasgow, County Clerk Lawrence Daly Ferry, Circuit Clerk Andrea Chastain, Regional Superintendent Sean Walsh and our county board officials here as well as our local officials. All of us can remember where we were on September 11th, 2001, when the news first broke about two airplanes hitting the World Trade Center towers, a third airplane hitting the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and a fourth aircraft crashing in rural Pennsylvania. This was one of the most sobering times in our nation's history, and one we will remember for the rest of our lives. We are gathered today to mark the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on our country, to pay tribute to the nearly 3,000 people who died that day, and of those, more than 400 first responders. These men and women paid the ultimate price to protect the public safety. They are husbands, wives, daughters, sons, aunts, uncles, and friends who were taken too soon. Today is an opportunity for us to reflect on their lives, but it is also a day to remind ourselves how our country unified to get through this devastation. Today, we need this reminder more than ever. Before I uh, introduce our clergy, I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the hard work of our first responders and to especially recognize those in Will County whose lives are lost each year serving our communities. Thank you for your service. At this time, I invite the Joliet Police Department Honor Guard to present the colors. dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof 
that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Order. Let me next thank Stacy Sienko for a beautiful rendition this morning. Thank you very much. And next, if everybody can remain standing for our invocation, Father Christopher Gall. Eternal God, we remember before you this day those who are lost in the catastrophic events of September 11th, 2001, and for all those whom we love but no longer see. We give you thanks for the selfless courage of those brave souls who ran into burning buildings and who labored in the rubble. May their courage be to us a witness of what is possible when we are guided by love and dedication to our fellow human beings. We pray today for the continued healing of those still suffering emotional and physical scars. May your spirit breathe new breath into clouded lungs, new life into troubled minds, and new warmth into broken hearts, so that all may feel wrapped in your loving embrace. May we move from suffering to hope, brokenness to wholeness, from anxiety to courage, from death to life, from fear to love, and from despair to hope. Guide our feet along the way of peace. May we receive this gift so that we might become instruments of your peace in this world, knowing all people as equally loved, lovingly created, children of God. Amen. Thank you, Father. Please be seated. Again, good morning, everyone. It is refreshing to see such a great turnout for a special remembrance and memorial ceremony. My name is Dave Keltner, and on behalf of Adam Bogart, our president, and the Police Chiefs Association of Will County, it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Serving an unprecedented seventh term, Will County State's Attorney James W. Glasgow is known for groundbreaking initiatives that include establishing the Will County Children's Advocacy Center in 1995. He formed Will County's first gang prosecution unit. He launched a cutting edge technology crimes unit with an electronic sniffing canine to identify predators who use the internet to sexually exploit children. He has pioneered the Will County's first specialized domestic violence court. He created the League of Extraordinary Canines and Friends to address animal abuse and neglect and spearhead each of Will County's problem solving courts, including the filing or filing the petition to create our Veterans Court here in Will County. He received international attention for the successful prosecution of Drew Peterson, securing a 38-year sentence in the murder of his third wife in a 2004 landmark case. His awards include the Chicago Crime Commission Stars of Distinction Award, the Mitchell A. Mars Prosecutorial Excellence Award, and the Illinois State Crime Commission's Career Achievement Award. As a Will County resident and the Illinois State Police District, District 5 commander, 
I'm happy to introduce a great partner in our community, James Glasgow. Good morning. Uh, I was listening to the radio on the way over here, and uh, there was a piece about the Pennsylvania jetliner where 44 uh, or 40 Americans made a decision to do something. <clears throat> they uh, realized, I'm sorry, they realized what was happening, and they voted to take over the plane and crash it. <clears throat> they talked to their loved ones on the phone who begged them not to do that. But they knew that if they didn't, they were going to die anyway, and they had to do this. And they saved countless lives by taking that plane down. This is the most incredible country in, in the world. Um, <clears throat> I was born in uh, Chicago at St. Vincent's Infant Asylum, a maternity hospital in 1950. My mother was an Irish immigrant, my natural mother. And when I found my cousins in Ireland, the first thing they said to me is, Jim, do you know how lucky you are for being born in the United States of America in 1950? Well, I do now. I absolutely understand that. And <clears throat> what, what our first responders do, what our veterans do, is priceless. They get taken for granted. They're not appreciated. It's, it's very sad. And we've got to change that. I've had the pride and the honor of reviewing the use of deadly force by police officers in Will County since 1992. And if you watch television, they're out there indiscriminately harming people and killing people. That's not what happens. Will County is a melting pot of America. We have everything in this. We've got country clubs, we have poor neighborhoods, we have every type of industry, every type of ethnic, re religious background. And it, with that as the backdrop, since 1992, I've not had one single police officer exceed their lawful authority in the use of deadly force. In fact, in the vast majority of the cases, they hesitated to use deadly force and put their own lives in jeopardy before they finally had to do it. That's what real police officers do. And the firemen. We have shootings in Joliet, sadly. And when those shootings happen, those firemen, along with the policemen, race to the danger. They get a dispatch. They don't know what they're facing. Recently, there was one where a man with a gun called in and said, get some cops over here. I'm going to start shooting. Well, what does that tell them? It really doesn't tell you. He could be set up with a sniper rifle waiting for them to come around the corner and pick him off one at a time. But they, five officers raced to that scene. And sadly, deadly force had to be used at that time. But it was justified. That, that's the reality of what's going on on the streets. Um, I've, I've had great pleasure in, in uh, recently getting some canines for some small departments that didn't have them using our drug forfeiture funds. And then <laughs> what's really cool is Joliet just called the other day and they said, hey, could we get one too? Well, you know, Joliet's kind of flush and they, they have more than one dog, but I thought that's really neat that they're asking. And he said, so the dog can be a member of your League of Extraordinary Canines. Well, that may sound silly, but I love Guardians of the Galaxy and Star Wars and stuff like that. So I thought we'd make these dogs superheroes in, a com in our community. And I, I promise you, we're going to make this the most humane community in Illinois, the county, as far as how we care for animals. And I've got, I've got dogs at home, and, and the one thing they, they've gotten from me through COVID, they're, the unconditional love and loyalty that they show you, uh, it's... It, it's indescribable, and I actually get joy out of waiting on them, taking care of them. I had five kids and only one's left, so I, got, I had to have replaced them with something. So it's, and the canines don't talk back. So um, the veterans, the Veterans Assistance Commission, Christy McNichol, I don't know if Christy's here today. Um, she's doing a fantastic job, and hopefully both her agency and the Child Ad Center will be moving into the Silver Cross building that we just got for a half a million dollars that would have cost us $30 million to build. And once that happens, we will have the premier veterans campus in the country. We'll have veterans apartment housing. 
we'll have a 60,000 square foot clinic, and then we'll have the Veterans Assistance Commission on one parking lot. That will be next to spectacular. And I'm working with Canines for Veterans. Uh, Mike Tellerino uh, has a program where he provides veterans with PTSD with a companion animal, with a therapy animal, and they work. Sadly, he has a memorial, a memorial that he built in Shanahan, the Forgotten Warrior Memorial, I'm sorry, I'm dry here, the Forgotten uh, Warrior Memorial, and it's beautiful. You should go down and see it. It's right on the, the canal there, thank you, in, uh, in Shanahan, and I'm hoping to get senators uh, a sign on I-55 to tell tourists and people that it's just off there on Route 6. Uh, Mike hasn't been able to do that, but if you go down and see it, you'll be amazed. Sadly, there's a, there's a marble pillar for each branch of service, and when there's a suicide because of PTSD, there, there's a ceremony held, and their name goes on those tablets. Um, but that PTSD, it's the same as being killed in the battlefield, because their, brain, their psyche was killed when they were in the battlefield. Um, I, have an, I have a new neighbor, and I was talking to him, and he did two tours in Afghanistan and two tours in Iraq. I, I, I didn't know what to say to him. Um, the odds of doing that and coming back alive, remarkable. Um, so one last thing, you know, with regards to what's going on in this country. Uh, bipartisan debate and compromise, that's how we get things done when we talk to each other. There's no other country on the planet that's anywhere close to what it is here. It's just like my, you know, everybody says, oh, let's go to Ireland, it's fun. No, no, they, they say this is the best place to be, the absolute best place to be on the planet. So we're foolish if we do anything to harm that. And next time you see a policeman or a fireman, just say thank you. You don't have to say thank you for your service, just say thank you. Because without them, we couldn't be sitting here. There'd be chaos in the streets. We wouldn't have transportation to the hospital. Uh, fires would be burning down our buildings. So maybe that's a little exaggeration, but we, we, we literally take them for granted. And uh, you know, my garage door went up by accident uh, a few months back. And apparently there's a, sh a thing that can happen with your electrical system and it, it just went up three in the morning. So my wife and I, uh-oh, we got somebody coming in the house. So she called 911, we're scrambling around, and three police, police officers showed up, and the door went back down. So I'm thinking, oh God, the guy's giving himself cover now. So, and then all of a sudden it went back up. And thank God I wasn't in the garage, because they probably would have shot me. But, you know, it, but the officers were there, and we knew it. The key thing is, we knew they would be there. We knew they would be there. I didn't have to worry. So that's priceless. And, all the firemen and policemen here, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is John O'Connor, and I'm the fire chief of Lockport Township Fire Protection District and the current president of the Will County Fire Chiefs Association. And it is my honor to introduce our next speaker. He is a Joliet native who has dedicated 30 years to the mental health and well-being of firefighters across our nation. This journey started in New Orleans, where he served as a fire chaplain for New Orleans Fire Department. Seven years later, he was transferred to the Quincy Fire Department and was their chaplain for police and fire for 13 years. His path eventually led him back home, where he now serves as the current fire chaplain for the Joliet Fire Department. During his time in New Orleans, he was part of a contingent of clergy that responded to Ground Zero to assist first responders who were still searching for survivors. Please join me in welcoming Brother Ed Armbasich.
Good morning. Uh, most of my reflections today will be centered on our first responders. I'd like to begin by saying to each and every one of you what a privilege it is to be here with you and for you. Uh, when I look around and I see this awesome sea of uniforms, I see kindness, I see generosity, I see integrity, and most of all I see faith, hope, and love. As we come here today, we come as servant leaders to embrace each other as friends, walking with each other as God's ambassadors of service to others as we set aside this day of remembrance. I am a firm believer in listening to the voice of God calling each of us today in various ways to be for others. Looking out again, as I said, I see generosity. I see people who in their own way have heard the voice of God. Thinking about your own calling to serve, I ask this question, why do people want to serve? What is it? What compels people to serve? The only answer that I have really is love, even in the face of tragedy. It is awe-inspiring when people in life step out of their comfort zone and become the gift they were meant for themselves but most of all, for others. In life, God asks each of us to take a chance on him and to care for others. And what a blessing that is. A blessing to our city, our country, our state. We are blessed to have these wonderful people in uniform who have heard God's voice in their own way and responded freely to serve others. So I thank each and every one of you for your kindness and for your generosity. I was asked to share a few of my own personal thoughts on this day and how this day affected my life. I would like to begin with the sacred words of Jesus. And I say these words out of love, respect, and confidence. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Do not let your hearts be troubled. It is difficult to hear these words, but we must have faith and courage for each other when we face tragedy. We all remember where we were on 9-11. I want to go back to that day for each of us. And I want you to spend a moment and to think about where you were, what you were experiencing. At the time, I was stationed in New Orleans when all this took place. I was in the kitchen preparing breakfast and watching TV, and I thought I was watching a new action-packed movie, and this was part of an advertisement, and I suddenly realized that this was the real thing. This was in real time. And then on the screen was a Franciscan friar, Father Michael Judge, who was the New York Fire Department chaplain. My heart absolutely sunk. All of you know 
who are in the service of others knows what it feels like when one of your own has been hurt or has perished doing the work they love most, caring for others. And that happened to me that day when I saw the picture of Father Michael. It brought me to sadness and grief for my fellow friars in New York City. Michael was killed that day caring for what he loved most in life, his friends who cared for others no matter what the cost. He was anointing a dying firefighter. When something from the World Trade Center fell on Michael and he was killed instantly, he was marked as 0001, the first casualty. I was numbed at the moment. Then Father Ralph, who I lived with at the time, said to me, you know, you better get down to Engine 9. Engine 9 was located in the French Quarter. You need to go down and be with those firemen. And I said, I know. So I, I went. And as I was on my way, I received a call from Central Fire Services telling me that they are securing the levee system. They're afraid that they're going to blow up the levee system. And I said, I, I'm going to Engine 9 right now, uh, and if you need me, please call. And they said they would do such. As I sat with the firefighters, I somehow wanted to do something. I was compelled to call New York City. And that evening I spoke to Father Chris Keening, a dear friend of mine, another Franciscan, who took Father Michael's place. And I spoke to him that evening and I said, Father, what is it that I can do? I want to do something. He says, I want you to come out six months from today. It's when I'm going to really need you. I, I have so much help right now, I, I don't even know what to do with all these people, but I'm going to need you six months from now. And, and he said, and the reason for it is it's usually around six months where grief really uh, ripens inside people, knowing that all their friends that, that died that day, their family members, were not coming back. So I said I would, I would do that. So during those six months, the New Orleans Fire Department got together with me, and they purchased a ticket for me to go to New York and to be their representative. I was truly touched by their love and their devotion to me and to the people of New York by asking me to go and help in their name. And so I went. And I must tell you, as I was getting off the plane and getting on the train to take me to Lower Manhattan, my stomach was turning. I was a nervous wreck. I was filled with more sadness and more grief. I was filled with fear, with remorse, and I was not sure at that point how I was going to be good for anyone. As I was walking down 34th Street, I heard the fire truck, and I looked, and there it was, Engine 1, Ladder 24, right across from St. Francis Parish and Friary, the home of Father Michael Judge. I kept saying to myself, this is so surreal. I really am here. And as I was walking towards St. Francis, I was on the same side of the street the firehouse was on, and there was a young firefighter directing the truck back into the station. And he smiled at me, and I returned the smile, and I crossed the street, and I knocked on the Friary door, and one of the brothers answered the door and took me directly to Father Chris. Father Chris, at that point, said to me, 
let's go now across the street. And I, I said, you know, would it be okay if I could just stay here just for a few minutes just to kind of get my thoughts together? I'm not sure what I'm, I don't know what's going on, but I'm feeling very, very sad inside. He says, no, no, that's okay. You just come with me and um, you're gonna be okay. And he kept saying, you're gonna be okay. And I was. I was so afraid that I was going to be absolutely, I was gonna break down in front of them. And, and he reminded me again, he said, remember, you're part of this family. Wherever you go, you're a, a chaplain to the fire department. Whatever community, you're part of that community. That's why you're here. And that is why I wanted you here. One of the hallmarks of our order, the Franciscans, is the many ways we do ministry. We call it a ministry of presence, being with people where they are in life at any moment. And when I met everybody, I was really, I, I felt this, this extreme sadness, but at the same time, I felt good to be with them. They would tell me all their stories of grief, and they were happy to see me because I was a new face, and so they had an opportunity once again to tell their stories because it's in telling the story that we heal ourselves. One of those stories is, I remembered Battalion Chief Jimmy Ritchie's. He's retired now. He had four sons. One of the boys died at uh, Ground Zero, and three uh, of his sons now are presently firefighters for the New York Fire Department. Jimmy Ritchie vowed that he would go to the scene every day, he said to me, I'm going to find my son. I must find him. And six months later, he found him. In the Catholic tradition, on March 25th, the church celebrates the feast of the Annunciation of Mary, who received this awesome greeting from Gabriel asking her to be the mother of God. Three days before the Annunciation, Jimmy Ritchie's mother had passed away, and they were on their way to the church for funeral. And all of a sudden, he receives a phone call from Ground Zero, and they said, Jimmy, we found your boy. So he said to his wife, I want you to go to the funeral. I'm gonna take the three boys with me, and we're going to go to Ground Zero. And so he did, he took his three sons, and they carried Jimmy out of the pit, along with the woman he was carrying before the building collapsed on him. They found Jimmy's shield, his jawbone, and a part of the woman's rib cage. Jimmy was so grateful to have something that he could bury because over 120 firefighters were never found. They were vaporized. They were killed instantly. Jimmy explained that for every 12 floors that came down, it became compact into 12 inches of pulverized steel and concrete. Jimmy said that Annunciation Day was the best Annunciation he ever experienced. He found his son by the grace of God and perseverance at ground zero. Holy ground, sacred ground. I spoke to Jimmy a few days ago and he asked me to say to each and every one of you, thank you for your prayers and that he will continue to pray for all of you. He asked for prayers for his comrades the people of New York, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. One of the things he did tell me that he learned in all this was that he had to give up rage. He had to give up feeling bad about what happened. And it was in doing that he became a better person. 
Jimmy Ritchie's is one of the finest men in the New York Fire Department who, reps, who represents all the firefighters as men and women filled with hope and grace. Jimmy now is retired, as I said, but his three sons continue to walk in his footsteps. I'd like to conclude with two quotes, one from Pope Francis and the other from the letter to the Galatians. God is the light that illumines the darkness, even if it does not dissolve it. And a spark of divine light is within each of us. Let your light shine before all. And Galatians, and let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Again, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share with you. And to all the firefighters and police officers and our veterans, people in the military, um, and the people of our area here, I want to make sure you know that you are in my prayers and in my thoughts each day. May God continue to give you the strength to carry on and to do what you do best, caring for others. God bless you. Please welcome the AFFI Honor Guard and Lieutenant Matt Olson from the Bolingbrook Fire Department, retired, who is the current AFFI 4th District Vice President. They'll be performing the fire service bell ceremony. The men and women of today's fire service are confronted with more dangerous work environment than ever before. We're forced to continually change our strategies and tactics to accomplish our tasks. Our methods may change, but our goals remain the same as they were in the past, to save lives and protect property, sometimes at a terrible cost. This is what we do. This is our chosen profession. This is a tradition of the firefighter. The fire service of today is ever-changing, but is steeped in its traditions, 200 years old. One such tradition is the sound of the bell. In the past, as firefighters began their tour of duty, it was the bell that signaled the beginning of that day's shift. Throughout the day and night, each alarm was sounded by a bell, which summoned these brave souls to fight fires and to place their lives in jeopardy for the good of our fellow citizen. And when the fire was out, and the alarm had come to an end, it was a bell that signaled to all the completion of that call. Where a firefighter had died in the line of duty, paying the supreme sacrifice, it was the mournful toll of the bell that solemnly announced the comrade's passing. We utilize these traditions as symbols, which reflect honor and respect on, on those who has given so much and who have served to work to symbolize a devotion that their brave souls had for their duty. A special signal of three rings, three times each, represents the end of our comrades' duties and that they will be returning to quarters. And so those who have selflessly given their lives for the good of their fellow man, their tasks completed, their duties well done, to our comrades, their last alarm, they are going home.
just as we remember our fellow firefighters, we cannot forget those who also made the ultimate sacrifice. 40 passengers and crew of Flight 93 in Pennsylvania. 59 passengers and crew of Flight 77 at the Pentagon. Eighty-seven and sixty passengers of flights eleven and one seventy-five at the towers. Fifty-five people at the Pentagon. And the thousands of others who have died from 9-11 related illnesses. I've been fortunate to be an elected official for 18 years now in different capacities. And I have to say this is one of the most honoring um, event that I have ever, an emotional event I've ever been to. So I want to thank the Will County Chief of Police and Fire Association. I want to thank the fire departments and our law enforcement that are here today. I want to thank our veterans. And I want to thank our community who have taken the time to commemorate with us. And though we are here remembering the 20th anniversary of the attacks, we must all commit in our hearts to continue to honor and remember those we, who have lost. We are thankful for the many men and women who work tirelessly each day to protect the safety of our country and Will County. Thank you for being here. If you could remain standing. Father Groh, could you come up and give our benediction? O oh God of compassion, love, and healing, look upon us people of many different faiths and traditions who have gathered here this day. 
In your goodness, give eternal light and peace to all who died in the attacks on September 11th. The heroic first responders, firefighters, police officers, emergency service workers, Pentagon personnel in Washington, flight personnel and passengers in Pennsylvania, along with all the innocent men and women who are victims of this tragedy. We ask in your compassion to bring healing to those who, because of their presence that day, continue to suffer from injury and illness. Heal to the pain of still grieving families and all who lost loved ones. Give them strength to continue their lives with courage and hope. Our hearts are one with theirs as our prayer embraces their pain and suffering. God of peace, bring your peace to our violent world. Peace in the hearts of all men and women and peace among nations of the earth. Turn to your way of love those whose hearts and minds are consumed with hatred. God of understanding, overwhelmed by the magnitude of September 11th, we seek your light and guidance as we confront such terrible events. Grant that those whose lives are spared may live so that the lives lost may not have been lost in vain. Comfort and console us, strengthen us in hope, and give us wisdom and courage to work tirelessly for a world of true peace where love reigns among nations and in the hearts of all. Amen. And I just want to say one last thank you to everybody who contributed uh, from the police organizations to the fire organizations and our partners at Will County. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you.